national politician, we're showing you what matters most to us right here at home. They've got some musical act on, and we've got weather first. They're talking to a cabbie, and we're showing you how to avoid that big backup on the Kennedy. What's more important to you? Marianne in the morning, News to Chicago. It's time for your medicine. Preventive medicine, that is. Preventive medicine will help you avoid life-threatening diseases. Diseases that cost our health care system billions of dollars and could cost you your life. This message is brought to you as a public service by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. The following is a rebroadcast of News 2 Chicago at 10. Good evening, and thanks for making News 2 Chicago your choice. I'm Linda McLennan. Lester's off tonight. It took almost 80 hours of non-stop talks, but apparently there is a deal tonight to end the UPS strike. After 15 days on the picket line, word of a settlement is just getting out. President Clinton was told earlier tonight, and there is supposed to be an announcement any moment in Washington. And while we're waiting for the official word, the news is spreading quickly, and it's created a lot of excitement along the picket line tonight. That's where News 2 Chicago's Jeff Morale is. Jeff. Linda, we actually delivered the news of this impending deal to the few dozen strikers who have been picketing here outside UPS's largest sorting plant here in Willow Springs, and they are obviously thrilled to hear there is a deal in the works, but understandably, at the same time, they are just a bit anxious. They want to hear the details of this so-called deal before they drop their picket signs and start jumping for joy. I want a, a good contract. We've been fighting for a long time, and we don't want to settle for something that's not a quality. You know, we don't want to get shortchanged, and we work hard for our money in here, and we want to, you know, get what we deserve. That's the bottom line. Though. Show us the money, and you know, we produce for these people. We make them the money. They should be able to show us some money, too. You know what I mean? That's only fair, you know? We don't want thousands and thousands of dollars more an hour. Just give us some a, a fair price here, you know? A lot of us are ready to go back to work, and... Hopefully it's a good deal for both parties. I hope I hope we get a good contract out of the whole thing. That's the only feeling I got about it. Is your party that's pleased that it's finally over, no matter what? Mm, not really. It could go on. As, as long as we got a good contract, then it's all right. If we didn't get a good contract, that's why I'm not so optimistic. Now, you need to keep in mind that all these strikers you see behind me are members of Local 705, just as almost all the UPS strikers are in the Chicago area. They are honoring the national Teamsters strike while they are still trying to independently negotiate a new contract. So while they are thrilled to hear there is a deal pending between the national Teamsters and UPS, they still are leery about their own deal. It's still trying to be worked out, but it certainly does bode well for Local 705 that the nationals are close to uh, striking a deal with UPS. That usually means that their deal will be very, very similar, if not the same. For now, reporting live from Willow Springs, I'm Jeff Morrell, News 2 Chicago. Linda, back to you. Jeff, I'm listening to the soundbite to the people you talked to, and they did sound very reserved and not all that optimistic. I think these people have had enough. 15 days is a long time out here, and they are anxious to get back to work and willing to compromise in some of these points, but they want to make sure this has all not been for naught. They want to make sure they actually get something out of this deal, so while they are excited, they are guardedly so, they want to see the details of this contract. One interesting point I do want to make is a lot of these people say this was very beneficial for them as a collective working unit. They work in this huge plant here, 5,000 people. They haven't known many of these people they work with. This has been an opportunity for them to get to know each other and build camaraderie. Jeff, we're expecting word, official word from Washington, we hope within the half hour. Thank you. Two suburban men were charged tonight with the murder of a woman found strangled in Hoffman Estates. Authorities have charged 28-year-old Ernest Burge of Streamwood and 30-year-old Pedro Diaz Jr. of Elgin with the murder of Laura Floden of Hanover Park. Floden, who was 34, was last seen in a Hanover Park bar drinking with two men. Her body was discovered yesterday in a field near a new home construction site in Hoffman Estates. Floden's fire-damaged car was found near Streamwood High School. Burge and Diaz have been charged with first-degree murder and arson. 
An accident on the Tri-State earlier today has claimed the life of Jack Oremus. He was the son of the longtime mayor of Bridgeview and a successful businessman. You can see the black sport utility vehicle which Oremus was apparently driving. We don't have any indication yet as to what caused the crash late this afternoon. The 60-year-old Oremus was an executive with Prairie Material Sales and Prairie Bank and Trust. His father, John, has been mayor of Bridgeview for the past 38 years. Chicago officials may try to have certain neighborhoods declared state disaster areas after this weekend's wicked rainstorms. Most of the flood water has now receded from streets and basements. Officials at the Water Reclamation District say that the three sections of the deep tunnel are full of stormwater. ComEd tells us about 200 customers are still without electric power tonight. Those outages, they tell us, are scattered. In deciding whether or not to seek a disaster...